Good morning, everybody. Orange Jay here with another War of the Visions video, and today we've got an extra special video coming to you featuring the often maligned, often hated on Unit Etra. Now, I was streaming last week, and a viewer in stream, Thallus, was hanging out in chat, and he said, Hey, Orange Jay, I have a video I want to share with you. I think it could make for some good content if you wanted to feature it on your YouTube channel. And I was like, Yeah, dude, shoot me the video. And he claimed, he claimed that he soloed Earth Selection Quest 7 through 10, solo Etra. And I was like, look, look, I've, I, you know, Etra has a special place in all of our hearts and a special place on the bottom of every tier list in this game. Can you really solo Earth Selection Quest, the hardest quest in Earth Selection, you know, 7 through 10? 11, 12, and 13 are a different monster, but 7 through 10, can you get those done to where you can get that 120 Miraga only using Etra? Well... It turns out you can, and it turns out we're going to show you how to do it tonight. Now, before we start the playback of this video, and I'm not going to show the whole run, it's like an 18-minute video, I'm going to speed it up, show you the important points. I want to first point out the build here, and how Thales was able to figure this out, because that's really, really important. So, you see the build on the screen, and the important parts to this build are the armor, the Sage's Hat plus 5, which by the way is farmable for anybody whenever you want it and then the TMR with specific trust stones on it. Now, let's see what Thallus had to say before I kind of break that down. Here is a, or a, a snippet, right, from his Reddit post where he shared these videos, and he says, look, Etra has way less evasion agility and lux than Shadow Links. As you guys all probably know, Shadow Links, it's pretty easy to solo Dark Selection with her because she's a god tier MR unit, and Etra's not exactly known as one of those. So he says, yeah, she's worse than Shadow Links in every meaningful way. All right, cool. Etra only has Pummel to make chains, whereas Shadow Links has Dream Within a Dream. One of the missions you must complete in this is make a long chain, and so it's going to be kind of hard thing for Etra to do, especially because Etra does not have a way of stopping an enemy unit. You, there's two ways to make chains in this game with one unit, right? Either lap the enemy, like go many more times than them and build up a chain, or you can inflict like stop on them so they don't get turns, and then you can build up a chain. Etra isn't fast enough to lap them and doesn't have stop in her kit like Shadow Links does, so those are problems. Now, how did he overcome those problems? Well, the Esper Glacial, when you summon Glacial, it has a chance of stopping an enemy. So if you land that stop, boom, you can pummel them over and over again with Etra to build the chain, we'll show that off. Then the other thing I wanna show off here, again, this is from the Reddit thread, is he talks about his runes and he says i could only make this run possible with trust stones three dodge types and three speed types equipped on ketones tmr now i want to point out here that the sage's hat plus five is not the best evasion gear in the game if you have farmed some of the like raid evasion gear um the uh, winter coat for example because etra can't wear the defense pin version the defense pin evade gear but she can wear winter coat so winter coat would make this easier and maybe you wouldn't need the runes but that's that's Thallus' setup, and so let's go ahead, let's get into this. Now, there's many different phases to this fight, and this first phase here is definitely the easiest one to complete with an evasion build like Etra right here, right? You just kind of park yourself in the corner, you start buffing up, and something you're going to have to think about throughout this run, and something that I'm going to reference over and over again, is building up AP right no bells equipped here but it's really not a problem if the mobs can't hit you like these dragons and these snakes just can't hit etra so you can sit here and take your time you can just punch them over and over again to build up ap so that's i think kind of the first smart thing that thalus is doing right here just realizing i don't need to be in a rush it's okay if this is a 15 minute long plus fight as long as i'm not getting hit and dying I can just take my time. So I'm going to speed through kind of the rest of this dragon and snake part of the fight. The snakes can land par paralyze on you, but they still can't hit you after they paralyze you. So it's really not a problem. Sit here, kill these guys, build up your AP, no big deal. So we're going to go ahead and skip, and I wrote down some timestamps here. We're going to skip to about 5 minutes and 40 seconds into the fight. That's about right here. At this point, you're going to be finishing off the snakes and the dragons with this run, and this will spawn a Titan and a Marlboro. 
Now, this is a little bit more threatening. The Marlboro doesn't have a ton of accuracy, so you really don't have to worry about it hitting you unless it gets behind you. You really don't want anything getting behind you at any point in this run. Etra is not a great evasion unit, so when hit, when attacked from behind, the mobs will have a better chance to hit you. So in this part, what Thal says a pretty good job of is avoiding letting units get behind him and then just killing them, right? Again, here, you're not worried about completing any special missions, you're just worried about not dying, and right there was a danger spot. The Titan was able to get behind Etra and land a bunch of damage. I don't know if you guys can hear my cat, like, caterwauling over there in the background. I'm sorry if you do, he just won't be quiet. Um, another thing I want to mention about Titan right here. Watch where Etra ends up. She's going to end up kind of right here next to the side, and then Marlboro's going to slide in next to her eventually. Titan takes up a lot of space on the screen. So if you can move yourself into a spot where his bulk will not allow him to uh, maneuver past you, that's a plus. If he's not behind you, he's probably not going to be able to hit you. And now he's just going to sit here and DPS them down. We're going to go ahead and skip forward again to about the nine minute mark. Now, notice that Etra's taking some damage. So we'll skip ahead to about here. And this next part is big. Titan goes down, Kilpe and Eileen have spawned, and Etra has taken a lot of damage. Something that Etra does have in her kit is Chakra. She can actually heal herself, which is very important in this run. So right here, what Dallas is doing that's really smart is healing and kiting back. And he's kiting back to this area for a very specific reason. The Marlboro is still alive, Eileen and Ketone are moving up, and Kilfe has a lot of accuracy and has Energy Buster. Um, in Thalos' own words, he said that that Energy Buster Kilfe was the scariest part of this run. So why isn't Kilfe using Energy Buster right here? Because she'll hit her allies. You just position yourself where Kilfe is forced to hit her allies if she uses Energy Buster and she just won't use it. It almost bugs the unit out to where she's just standing there doing nothing. Now, this was a crucial part. Did you see what just happened? He summoned Glacial and a stop landed on Ketone. This will allow Etra to get the chaining done, which is probably the single hardest mission to complete in this fight. So if, you do, if you're if you doing this run and you get to this point, you want to make sure you have some pummels left in your kit and enough AP to use them so you can build up that chain. And Etra gets the bonus of being such a low damage unit that she gets multiple pummels off. So in this case, her low damage actually kind of pays off for her. She gets the chain built up on Ketone, and now you're almost in the clear. A bit of a mistake right here, allowing Kilfe to move up where Kilfe would be able to hit you without hitting her allies. I don't know if there was necessarily a way to avoid that. Like, the way agility worked out right here, I don't know if Thalus could have made a different move, but look at the damage that Kilfe was able to do. Now, to counter that, moving to that wall and allowing the enemies to encircle you right here is a very smart play. Because now the Marlboro is standing right there, and notice he does not choose to kill it. Notice he leaves it alive, and then Eileen doesn't have the accuracy to hit anybody, so that's fine. Um, start punching Eileen, and then Eileen goes in and kills him. Like, classic Eileen. Classic Eileen. Helping out the helping you out even when she's not on your team. What a god. Okay, taking advantage of Etra's Doom skills to speed up the run a little bit. And at this point, as long as this uh, as long as this Titan is not able to get behind Etra, he can't hit her. He has like some very, very low chance apparently because he is using that move. But you'll see in a second, Etra's gonna run up and just face tank him here in a minute. He can't hit her. He just can't do it. So she's going to walk up right here, stand in front of him, and she's actually out of moves at this point, I think. Yeah, no more AP skills available. So at this point, it's like five minutes of her just punching Titan in the face. But, oh, whoops, sorry, I forgot to mute it. Um, I'll mute it there. Uh, she's going to punch Titan in the face until he's dead. Now, I'm going to skip ahead. We'll watch that glorious moment in, uh, yo, know, five minutes in the future here. Here it comes very soon. A little bit of a loading. All right, here we go. Here we go. Etra, kill him. You can do it, Etra. We believe in you. Do your one thing. This is your thing, Etra. He only has a thousand HP left. You got him with the crit, and he is dead. So we're gonna let this play through a little bit more because we want to see that mission screen. What missions exactly did Etra have to accomplish to get this done? You're gonna see here in just a moment. We'll go ahead and at this point, Thalus is just like you know, 
exceedingly happy because this is a major accomplishment, right? Getting that done is a huge deal. And like, here's the missions, right? No picking up crystals, make the chain of five or more. Those are the two you have to worry about. Obviously, no ally dying, this top one, you ain't worried about that one. If your one ally dies, it runs over. So the elemental chain five, that was the thing that was done to Ketone. And then not picking up crystals, that's where you just have to make sure not to have a little bit of like a brain fart along the way. And um, what Thalos mentions when he kind of uh, mics in at the end of the video is he never used auto to just like sit back and let the AI win the fight for him because he was scared of the auto accidentally picking up a crystal because, you know, the AI will do that to you sometimes. So that was pretty dang amazing. Like that was a super impressive run. And that's something that Etra could not have probably done before without trust stones or at least without some plus five raid gear. Um, if this is something that you're interested in doing, I'm going to link the Reddit thread in the uh, description of this video because in that thread, there is a video that shows all the runs from 7 through 10 if you want to see those as well. Give Thalus some views. Yo, this is amazing. This is like one of the coolest accomplishments I've seen in this game so far and it's a really spicy Etra video. Who does not love a really spicy Etra video? All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Thals, thank you for sharing this video with me, and uh, I hope you watched this video, and I hope I did your run justice, my man. All right, that's it, y'all. Have a great day, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.